if you have uh, three fluorines, a chlorine, and an oxygen, it essentially looked almost the same. Like this, there'd be a couple different, the term I used before, isomers of it. It, I, I'd say it'd be pretty unusual for that oxygen, for the chlorine to be sitting on the oxygen. Uh, the, the way you can tell if you want to draw it out is just draw it that way and see which skeleton gives you the better answer. And that definitely will tell you which is the right skeleton. So if you drew it this way, uh, and let's put our beautiful structure there, all non-zero formal charges, or all zero formal charges, and then you said, what if I tried a different skeleton? So you want... something like that, which would be a trigonal bipyramidal, because there's five groups. Uh, let's put on all the... how many did we say there was? 42? Mm -hmm. 42. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, uh, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. I still have more? 42. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess it's going to be an octahedral regardless. Wait, how is it an octahedral? It's like a trigonal planar. It's just the way I drew it. Stick. It's meaningless right now because you just count the groups 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's got to be octahedral. The way I've drawn it right now is meaningless. You have to redraw it three dimensionally. So it'd actually be a square planar geometric shape. Okay, uh, did I count everything right? It adds up to 42? Mm. And since the xenon has 8, um, it kind of seems stable with the xenon. Yeah, so there's 42 electrons around it, right? Oxygen has two bonds, which is expected. Chlorine has no formal charge. Yeah. This is a stable molecule. That's good. Does anything have a non-zero formal charge? No, so in this case, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between those two, meaning you wouldn't be able to tell which one's a better skeleton. Mm -hmm. So you could, I'd probably, if I was grading this test, I'd accept either answer if possible. And I'd think you were really smart if you drew both. So like, uh, my question was like, since we have a CL after the F, uh -huh. uh, no, actually, um, no, I think the O and the CL should be switched because um, that would denote that the O bonds to the CL. So like, yeah, like if we had something like that, how would we be able to tell that the O is bonded to the xenon or that the CL is bonded to the Either way it was written, you couldn't, you wouldn't know. Yeah, you don't know. So you just have to guess and... Well, these are both equivalent answers. Right. So you can just write either. You can write both of them. So if you just didn't know, you just... Uh, guess and check if it like makes sense with like the charging. Yeah, yeah. Button. Usually, one will be a worse answer. One of the skeletons will be worse in most cases, and so that makes your picking obvious. And then that would be due to formal charges. Something formal charges you can't fix them, or the octet is unfixable. Something would be really weird. What do you do with the electronegativity? Like. When something's negative, it wants. Um, I forgot what we did with electronegativity. Like, oh, electronegativity, that's with formal charges. Okay. Like fluorine, you'd usually want a minus formal charge yeah. or zero. Okay. Something with like carbon, you'd want a positive formal charge or zero. Okay. So here it doesn't apply because we have all, non all zero formal charges. Huh? Um, yeah. Is it